couldn't get it, Swami. He would not give it to you. Not a cent. He was cruel in his refusal, abusive. The present is filled with evil forebodings, Mrs. Lang. What do you see, Swami? I see great trouble, disaster. I see the cause of your present unhappiness. I see great crowds, confusion, excitement. I see a tall, dark man who will have great influence in your life. Can you tell me who this man is, Swami? The magic ball is dim. The face is shadowy. The name eludes me. Perhaps it'll come to me presently. I see tragic events which will alter your entire future. I see sorrow, despair. And again I see vaguely this tall, dark man. He's about to speak. Ah, he fades from view. Another man. I see the cause of your present unhappiness removed. Any more letters, Mr. Lang? Uh, no, thank you. That'll be all today. If I think of anything else, I'll use the dictaphone. Oh, by the way, Miss Pound. Is my wife with the guests? Why, no, sir. I think Mrs. Lang went down to the Swami's. Yes. I see. Forty thirty. Now let me see you win this game, Vivian. All right. All right. You ready? Yes. I'd like to speak to her. Yes, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> Mr. Fraser wishes to speak with you, madam. You'll excuse me, Nick. Oh, why, sure. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Will you please remember that you're supposed to be a lady and try to act like one? Listen, I'm tired of your rudeness. You just seem to delight in humiliating me in front of people. If you don't want to be humiliated, stop making a spectacle of yourself. For you. Yes. I saw how you were looking for me. Oh, now, now 
You can't play me for a fool as you do your husband. Hello, John. I just came up to see if the kids were getting along all right. So you and Lang take me for a fool, eh? Oh, you make me sick with your silly jealousies. Silly jealousies or not, you're going to stop this sort of thing or I'll put a stop to it. I guess I'll be moving along, too. Oh, please stay, Nick. We'll have so much fun at the seance tonight. You know I'd love to, baby. But your dad and oh, I... Oh, I can handle dad. Okay, kid. I'll stay. Come on. Ah, the magic ball. Tell me, what do you see? The sweetest kid in all the world. I'm sorry, madam. I can't tell you no more. But I must know more, Swami. The coming events are not clear. The great forces which reveal these things to me do not respond to those of little faith. Those who falter in the face of obstacles and material skepticism. But I do have faith, Swami. You don't know how much I believe in you and your wonderful power. Material demonstration is the only evidence of complete faith. If I get more money, will you be convinced of my absolute faith in you? Perhaps. Don't forget, Swami. I've told my house guests what a wonderful man you are. And have promised that you'd give us a crystal reading tonight. Madam knows how unhappy I am among skeptics. Oh, but you must come, Swami. I need you. I want you. I'll have the money for you then. I promise. I will come as a very special favor to you, most beautiful lady. Oh, I'm so glad. That's lovely of you, Swami. Until tonight, Swami. Until tonight, madame.
Bertie is a really great teacher. He not only has a marvelous knowledge of the occult, but he's so human, so understanding. If it weren't for you silly women, these Hindu fakers would starve to death. You're very rude, John. No, I'm not, my dear. I'm only telling the truth. Besides being fakers, these swamis are always making trouble. You'll soon find that Swami Umurda is no faker. He'll positively startle you. Yes, they say he really is uncanny. You see, even Mary admits it. And being Richard's secretary would make anyone a skeptic. Now I can finish start it to tell you in there. Well, no man seems to be in the air tonight. Why, Nick was just, was just going to show me a new dance step. It looked very interesting. Will you show me the same step? Why, sure. Betty will excuse me. Well, I won't. Mmm, that swell perfume you're wearing, Mrs. Fraser. What is it? It's a perfume Chateau makes especially for me. He says it fits my personality. I'll never forget it. The perfume or the personality? The perfume. These matters must be straightened out at once. And furthermore, Mrs. Lang has been giving large sums of money to this Swami. Judge, as my attorney, you know more about my business than anyone else. Yes. I've got to put a stop to these drains on my resources. And with all this, my home has become a public hangout for gigolos, hoodlums, and fakers. I tell you, Judge, I'm not going to stand it any longer. Hey, I beg pardon, sir. Did you ring, sir? No, I did not ring. And if I catch you listening at my door again, I'll kick you off the place. And send you back where you came from. You understand? I'm sorry, sir. Ask Miss Betty to come here and to bring that gigolo with her. Mr. Genner? Yes? I'm going to straighten out this whole mess if I have to throw them all out. Family, servants, and all. Well, if you will pick a man out of the gutter, what can you expect? A man doesn't have to come from the gutter to be a rat. Brown, when you get through with your routine correspondence, will you please call up the Union Trust Company and check on the bonds in our safety deposit vaults and also check on the various transactions with our brokers for the last 60 days. Come in. You sent for us, Father? Yes. <clears throat> Listen, Gunnar. You have a colossal nerve coming into a respectable house like this. I've checked on you and found out that you're nothing but a hoodlum and a rat. What's your game? Father! Wait a minute, kid. I may have been running with the mob, Mr. Lang, but I'm going straight now. Your kind never goes straight. I'm warning you to stay away from my daughter. And I'm telling you I'm going to marry your daughter. You'll marry her only over my dead body. All right, then. I'll marry her over your dead body. Nick, father! To avoid a scene, I'm not going to throw you out of the house tonight, Jenna. But once you leave, don't ever come back. And never be seen with my daughter again. Father isn't really as bad as he sounds, Nick. And I will see you again. You're okay, kid. 
I never let any guy talk to me like that before. Come along. of you to come, Swami. It is my great pleasure of being of service to you, my most gracious lady. I have everything prepared. As soon as I introduce you to the guests, I'll run upstairs and get Mr. Lang. And the check. Folks, this is Swami you murder. Betty, will you assist the Swami until I return? Certainly, Mother. Well, Lefty, what are you doing here? Getting ready for a big killing? No, I'm trying to go straight. I just heard that our kind never go straight. Your kind, maybe. Yeah? Say, you haven't been doing any talking to Lang about me, have you? Well, you know I haven't, Nick. I ain't so sure. I was sitting pretty with this layout until somebody tipped Lang off tonight. Oh, it wasn't me, Nick. Honest, it wasn't. I'm on the level with you. You'd better be. Remember, I'm the boss of the gang and you still belong to it. I'm telling you, I'm through with a bunch for good. That last prison stretch cured me. I don't savvy your racket, Lefty. But don't start anything around here until you hear from me. And get this. No one ever walks out on the gang and lives. Five hundred dollars, and I got to have it. Only five hundred, huh? Well, you've given this dirty faker two thousand dollars in less than a month. It was worth it. If you only knew the things he told me. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You may be a fool, but I'm not. You won't get another cent from me. I'll get that money, Richard. And more, too. <laughs> Swami, you murdered a wonderful mystic. He's helping me to solve my problems. Well, if he's what you say he is, perhaps he can solve some of my problems, too. He could, if you'll only give him a chance. All right. I'll give him a chance. If he can tell me anything, you'll get the 500. Thank you, dear. Come in. The swarm is ready, madam. My dear friend, it is very difficult for me to delve the unknown in the presence of those who do not believe in the unseen forces which inexorably shape our destinies. In the mystic realm of the great unknown, there are invisible forces which reveal to me the secrets of today and the mysteries of tomorrow. The manifestations of these revelations come to me through two different mediums. One, the mystic crystal ball, in which the events of tomorrow are revealed to my sight. The other is the magic slate, on which I receive written messages from my spirit control.
First, through the medium of the slate, I shall answer any question any of you might wish to ask. The slate is perfectly clean, as you can see. I place it together and put the chalk inside. Mr. Lang. Yes? Would you seal the slate? Thank you. The slate will not be opened until one of you breaks the seal. Now, the room must be in complete darkness. Monroe, turn out the lights when the Swami commands you. Yes, and do not turn them on until I tell you. It would please me very much if you would ask the first question, Mr. Lang. All right. Uh, uh, one moment. The light. The question, Mr. Lang. Is there any real foundation for my present worries? Oh. Light. Don't touch that knife. You might destroy fingerprints. Someone in this room is a murderer. You will all stay here until the police arrive. Where are you going? To telephone the police. Police headquarters, please. Hello, Judge. Did you phone police headquarters? Yes, Captain Devlin. There's been a murder here. Has anyone left or entered this room since the murder? No. I attended to that myself. All right, Johnson, post your men outside and see that no one gets out or in. Watson, you stay with me. Don't call me Watson. The name is Watkins. Well, Lefty Louie of the North Side Gang. I thought you were in the big house. Mr. Lang had me paroled, sir. Why, this looks like a gathering of the... Northside clan. What are you doing here, Nick? I'm an invited guest. And you can't hang this on me, Devlin. No? No. Judge, weren't you an old friend of Mr. Lang's? Yes, 
I was his attorney for many years. Well, maybe you can tell me something about what happened here this evening. Well, briefly, we were holding a... a seance, I suppose you would call it. The room was in total darkness, and Mr. Lang had just asked a question of Swami you murder. What was the question? Something about whether there was any foundation for his worries. And the answer? There wasn't any answer. Then what happened? Uh, then there was the sound of a blow and of a body falling. Then the lights came on. Mr. Lang was lying where you see him. Who turned on the lights? Monroe, the butler. Immediately? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, there was a slight delay. Why did you delay turning on the light, Lefty? I left the switch for a moment, shut off the lights from the alcove. Sure, that's the only reason? Yes, it's the truth, sir. So help me. I'm John Frazier, Lang's former business partner. Thanks. So you're a mystic, eh? How long have you been working this town? Only a few weeks. Hmm. I never happened on to you before. The Swami's a very good friend of mine, Captain. I can vouch for him. Really? This is Mrs. Lang, Captain Devlin. How do you do, Mrs. Lang? This is Tommy and Betty Lang, and a little neighbor, Vivian Rogers. Now, folks, I'm going to ask all of you to take the same positions you occupied just before the lights went out. Watson, you take Mr. Lang's place. Back the entire scene from the moment before the lights were extinguished. I want you to time the interval of darkness as near as possible to what it was before, and then call for the lights. All right, Lefty, turn them out. All right, Watson. It's only me. Just trying out a theory. Ladies who are inclined to be a little indiscreet should not use distinctive perfumes. Why? Why, you don't think that I... These hairpins I found here match your hair. Yours? I may have lost a hairpin or two. Get Frazier. Oh, please, don't bring my husband into this. Oh, he's insanely jealous. Of course you know your husband suspected you and Lang. Well, lately he has been very unpleasant. Every time he saw us together. And Mr. Lang was kind to you? Yes, he was very kind. And generous and understanding. That's all. You may go to your room and don't leave it. Did you ever see this handkerchief before? Yes, it belongs to my wife. You suspected your wife of being too friendly with Mr. Lang, didn't you? Yes, I did. How long had you suspected this? For quite a while, if that's any of your business. And for that reason, you killed him. No, I didn't kill him. But I might have if someone hadn't beaten me to it. 
That'll be all, Mr. Frazier. You may retire to your room, but don't leave it without my permission. Gosh, you sure hung around at him, Chief. You ready to make the pinch? No. Get Nick and the girl up here. I won't keep you long, miss. You can't put me on the spot. I ain't talking. I don't know nothing and I ain't saying nothing. You're going to do plenty of talking before I'm through with you. You knock me over on suspicion, the gang will spring me. And you'll be walking the sticks. Get this, you. When I get ready to knock you over, it'll be for murder. And the only thing you'll ever spring is a trap. All right. Frisk him. Nice innocent toy you're carrying. Did your father approve of this man? Well, no. Father didn't like Nick very much. Did they ever quarrel? Yes, they did this evening. A very violent quarrel? Yes. I'm sorry. Where was this man while the lights were out? I was sitting right alongside of Betty. Miss Lang, I... I was holding her hand. Why, no, you weren't. You pulled your hand away just before the lights went out. Well, you can't hang this on me, Devlin. You know I never use a knife. No. That'll be all. And don't try to make a getaway. Bring Mrs. Lang up here. And by the way, tell those two kids and Mr. Lang's secretary to go to bed, Watson. Don't call me Watson. The name is Watkins. W-A-T-K-I-N-S, Watkins. I wonder how such a nice girl ever got mixed up with a dangerous rat like that. Well, she's been running around to a lot of nightclubs lately. She probably picked him up at some such place. Got a cigarette, Katie? Yeah. Thanks. What are you doing out here? Yeah, uh, what are you doing? I, I... I just have to go home. I can't stay away all night. I'm sorry, Miss Rogers. I'll phone your family for you. Take her back to the house. Come on. Oh, 
That's the dame that did it, all right, Chief. Yes. It does look like it, Watson. Bring Mrs. Lang up now. I'll be as brief as possible, Mrs. Lang. There were ten people in the living room tonight when your husband was killed. One of them killed him. Have you any suspicions? I don't know who could possibly have done it. You've recently endorsed a number of checks over to Swami and Murder. Why, yes. The last one was dated ten days ago. Yes, I believe so. When did you visit this Hindu last? Today. Did you take him another check? But what can all Did this... you take the Swami a check today? No. Why not? My husband refused to give me any more money. Did you argue the matter with your husband? Yes. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Lang, you quarreled rather violently with your husband, didn't you? Surely, Judge, he doesn't suspect me of killing my husband. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lang, but we must all answer any questions the captain cares to ask us. Why, yes, we did have a few rather heated words. When did this quarrel take place? Just before we all gathered in the mystic circle downstairs. That will be all, Mrs. Lang. I would suggest that you retire, but I must ask you not to leave your room. Gee, you're slick, Captain. She killed him for his money, didn't she? She and the Swami. Well, maybe. And then again, maybe not, Watson. Don't call me Watson. Now get the Swami and bring along his slate. So you're Swami of murder, the mystic, eh? I am. Mrs. Lang, the murdered man's wife, has been one of your most profitable clients, hasn't she? Yes, she has. You were extremely friendly with Mrs. Lang. Yes. But not so friendly with her husband. I never had any contact with Mr. Lang until tonight. You claim to be a mystic. Why don't you tell us who killed Mr. Lang? Perhaps I will, when the proper time comes. You answered a question for Mr. Lang tonight, did you not? I did, through the medium of the slate. Yes, you have real cause for worry. For you are being betrayed by one you trust. This looks like it was written left-handed. I can write equally well with either hand. I have to use both hands in my profession. I suppose in your profession you have to wear felt shoes so you can get around a room quickly and noiselessly. Why was there a delay after the blow, before you called for the lights? I was startled. Naturally, I didn't think quickly. Didn't think quickly, eh? Find a room for this man so he can retire and collect the scattered thoughts. Then bring Monroe here. Just as cold as the cobras of his native India. And as deadly. Well, Judge. There's just one more suspect. Monroe, alias Lefty Louie. You know, Devlin, I strongly suspected Monroe before you started your investigation. Why? I heard Mr. Lang severely reprimand him just before the seance for eavesdropping outside the study door and threatened to send him back to prison. Monroe, you're in a pretty tough spot. 
You're a man with a police record. A parole convict. You were in the room tonight when Mr. Lang was killed. And by your own confession, away from the light switch when the blow was struck. Why did you kill Richard Lang? Oh, I swear I didn't kill him, Captain. He was the only real friend I ever had. You'll have a hard time convincing the jury of that, Monroe. Did you scream, Mrs. Frazier? Why, yes. My husband was having a nightmare and he frightened me. What? What, what, what happened? Mr. Frazier's been having a nightmare. I think you'd better find another place for Mrs. Frazier to sleep. Why, certainly. Come, dear. Not resting well tonight, Mr. Frazier. Come on, scram. The rest of you go back to your rooms. You'd better go to bed too, Lefty. And remember, don't try to make a getaway. The house is well guarded. Well, Judge. Lefty's the last of the suspects. I think, though, it would be a good idea to list all of them. Do you mind writing down their names as I recall them? Why not at all, David? Go ahead. John Fraser, elderly. Married to flirtatious flapper. Yeah. Insanely jealous of deceased. Nick Genner, gangster, killer, making play for daughter against violent opposition of deceased. Swami, a murder, avaricious faker, grab stopped by deceased. Yep. Monroe, alias Lefty Louie, gangster, for old convict. Yeah. Mrs. Lang, wife of the deceased, infatuated with Swami. Yeah. Mrs. Frazier and Mary Brown, secretary, with possible motives. I guess that's all, Judge. Kids are out. Unless you consider yourself a suspect, Judge. Hmm? <laughs> you write a mighty fine hand, Judge McLeod. You think McLeod, so? McLeod, McLeod. Say, you don't happen to be Dave McLeod, the old-time tennis champion, the Michigan media? Well, they used to call me that. By George, you were my biggest hero when I was a boy. Really? Watkins? I've just made a discovery. This is Dave McLeod, the old champion. Oh, well, I swing a mean racket myself. I'd like to take him on sometime. Well, in that case, why don't you and the judge have a game in the morning? <laughs> it's agreeable to me. And now, Devlin, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to my room. I'm a bit tired. Why, well, certainly, Judge, and thank you for your kind cooperation. Uh, good night. Night. Good night, Judge. Good night.
Gosh, Captain, how long are we going to stay here? Don't you know who killed him yet? Yes, I think I do. Well, then why don't you knock him over and let's go home? Did you notice the position of the knife in Lang's body? Sure, it was stuck in his back. The knife entered the back about here, on the left of the spinal column, and penetrated downward toward the right. Therefore, Lang was killed by a left-handed person. If the blow had been struck by a right-handed person, the knife would have taken the opposite direction. Furthermore, the killer must have been extremely powerful to drive a knife into a man's back like that. Lefty Louie. Shall I make the pinch, Chief? No, not just yet. Oh, all right. I don't know why they ever wished you on me, Watson. Don't call me Watson. What do you suppose that is, Chief? It's a thousand dollar bond made out to Richard Lang and endorsed by him. I knew it was Nick all the time. Hello? Captain Devlin? Yes? just like the one that killed Lang. Did anybody come into that room? No, sir. Did you leave the room at any time? No, sir. Sure you didn't doze off? No, sir. I was awake all the time. Watson, go and see if the knife is still in Lang's body. Gone, Chief. I guess Lefty knew too much. Poor devil. He was killed by the same hand that got Lang. Get back to your post, Kennedy, and keep a sharp lookout from now on.
Get something and throw over them. What are you doing here? Just gazing at the stars. Put this stargazer back in his cage and keep him there. Pull up that chair. Sit here and there. And don't go to sleep. Don't worry, Chief. I ain't gonna do no sleeping around this joint. What are you up to, Nick? I thought I heard a commotion downstairs. Get back in your room and stay there. Okay. Police headquarters. Sergeant Burke, this is Devlin. Yeah, Captain Devlin. I'm working on the Lang murder case. I want the chief to get some information the first thing in the morning and bring it out himself. I'm also sending some papers down for a handwriting analysis. Now listen carefully, Burke. You see, there's uh, been a little bit of a discrepancy. Have you uh, a match? Thanks. Keep them. And you stay in there. Okay, Watson. Don't call me Watson. The...
I told you to stay in... Well, Watson, I see you're still on the job. Yeah, but I thought daylight would never come. Come on, buck up. You've got to keep on your feet till the chief gets here. Okay. Good morning, Judge. How are you feeling this morning? To tell you the truth, Devlin, I'm feeling a trifle seedy. Well, that should make you and Watson even. Hmm? I would suggest that uh, immediately after breakfast, you have that tennis game. Uh, that should limber you up and blow the cobwebs out of your brain. I don't believe I've got even cobwebs in my brain this morning. Sorry. Some person in this room killed Richard Lang. Someone who had a desperate need to get him out of the way. There are, of course, certain members of the family and their friends who are above suspicion. Judge McLeod, who was present, is a respected member of the bar, attorney and lifelong friend of the deceased. Mrs. Lang was in the clutches of a navaricious faker. Her husband had refused to give her more money. They quarreled violently, and she threatened him. But Mrs. Lang did not kill her husband. John Frazier, for some time you had suspected Lang of being too friendly with your wife. You were insanely jealous. You came to that seance in this room with murder in your heart. Get up. Come here. I know that you didn't kill Richard Lang. I knew when I saw your crippled condition that you could not have crossed this room and committed the deed without betraying yourself. Nick Jenner, you're a gangster, a killer, and a desperate criminal. You quarrel violently with Richard Lang over his daughter. And I have positive proof that you threatened his life just before the seance. You claimed you were holding Betty Lang's hand, but you were not. I have enough evidence on you to send you to the chair. I didn't do it, Devlin. I swear I didn't. You know I never use a knife. Shut up, you rat. The worst thing I can hang on you is carrying concealed weapons. You didn't kill Richard Lang because the killer was left-handed. And I know you're not. The one suspect who is not here to defend himself is Lefty Louie, the butler. Uh, this man was a crook, a parole convict, who had just been harshly reprimanded by Lang for eavesdropping. But Lefty Louie did not commit the crime. He was the one person in this whole unhappy household who was loyal and faithful to Richard Lang. And the same hand that killed his master killed him. Swami, you're a faker and a swindler, preying on silly women. For some time, you've been extracting large sums of money from Mrs. Lang. Her husband put a stop to this. Only Lang stood between you and great wealth. You came to this house prepared to commit any crime, even murder, to get this money. But you can't get away with it. Lang was killed by someone who moves stealthily in the dark and used an oriental knife. You're an oriental, trained to glide about darkened rooms on felt shoes. 
You're powerful and agile and use either hand with equal facility. Give me your magnet. Oh, I'm not interested in exposing any of your silly tricks. I'm merely trying to show who committed the murder. The steel core inside the chalk follows the magnet. But you're not guilty. No man could have written the message and have committed the crime in the short time the lights were out. What's all this nonsense about, Devlin? Do you think Lang killed himself? Uh, just a moment, coroner. I'm coming to that. Lang was murdered by someone who was in his confidence. Someone who was very close to him. For some time, his broker's transactions had been falsified and he had been systematically robbed of various large bonds. That's one of the points you verified this morning, Chief. But Lang recovered some of the stolen bonds with their forged signatures and a guilty person was in imminent danger of exposure and imprisonment. The person who killed Lang was strong and athletic and able to drive a knife into a human body up to the hilt. Mary Brown, you write and perform the small acts of life right-handed. But it is a known fact that many people who are apparently right-handed are athletically left-handed. Killer wore noiseless footwear and was clever enough to wear gloves, leaving no fingerprints on the knife. A very unique knife, such as only a collector would have. Richard Lang was killed by a famous collector of antiques, a great left-handed athlete, a former tennis champion, Judge David McLeod, the man who forged Lang's signature to the stolen bonds. The handwriting on this forged bond, which you did not get last night when you opened the hidden vault in Lang's study, has been tested and matches your handwriting on this list of suspects. Stop him! Stop him quick! My <laughs> compliments. Captain Devlin, you're a very clever man. <laughs> and he escaped after all. I never even thought of a poisoned ring. Oh, thank you, Mr. Watson. Don't call me Watson. 